In this video, we're going to look at how to implement app open ads from AdMob in your Android Studio project. So the first thing to do, come to your AdMob dashboard, click on apps and then select the app which you are using to, inter to implement these app open ads. Then once you click on it, come over here on the sidebar and click on add units. Now here we have to create an add unit, click on add add unit and select the format as app open give it a name of your choice and then click create add unit then click done now we need to get to the help center article that has the implementation instructions so that click on the name that you just gave it and then here you can see implementation instructions click on that and then here the first step is to complete the instructions in the google mobile ads sdk guide and that's what we did in our first video if you haven't watched that already please check that link in the description to the full playlist and then the next thing is to, to follow the app open implementation guide click on that and will be brought to this page now Starting with this, I have an Android Studio project running and this is the app that we have been using for uh, the AdMob tutorials on this channel. If you haven't integrated the SDK, please first do that. The link is in the description. Then we shall continue from here. And the first thing to do is to create a my application class that extends the application class. So scroll down and you until you reach this third box then you have to copy this code and then create the my application class after creating it highlight this and paste the code that's just copied from the add mob tutorial guide now come back we need uh, the my application class and to be a private class inside the my application class so copy this private app class app open manager so copy the whole of this up to here and then paste it outside of the own create method so from here you can start importing these classes for the mobile ads the initialization complete listener and the initialization status now we need to add my application as the first parameter of the app open ad manager class constructor so you can right click here and okay you can just put your cursor here and let android studio do it for you or you can just do it manually so also import this class and this one okay now we have to go to our manifest and then add our as uh add register the application class so just type name and then select your my application class so that's all for the manifest and here you are seeing the add unit id is the test add unit id so this is for testing purposes and it only loads test ads if you want to show live ads from your admob account you have to replace that with your add unit id that you just created so you have, after testing you have to copy this and then replace the test add unit id with that one So now uh, all these steps are completed. Let's move on to the next step about loading the ad. So to load an ad, we are going to work on the load ad method. And we'll have to bring this code from here up to here. And we paste it inside the App open manager class app open ad manager class so down on the load ad 
method inside it this is where we are going to put this code so come and paste it here then this right anchor bracket should not be there just remove it okay and then import these classes Now we have to keep track of the current activity using activity lifecycle callbacks. Now, before you copy and paste this code, we have to first import the gradual dependencies down here. So copy these gradual dependencies, then open your build.gradle file or your app module and then paste them. Then you sync the project. Okay, once done, then you can com continue with the next step. So come back up here and this interface up here, we don't need it. So we have to change this method of show add if available. So right, copy this. Then come to the app open add manager class. So outside of the load add here, paste this method. Then import the classes. So where you see on add show, on show add complete listener, we don't need it, so delete it. And then import this. and remove this second parameter so input this class 2 and here there's a mistake that is not included in in this guide so you you see here we are missing the these two parentheses so put them and then this will solve the error then remove this and input this error uh, add error class then remove this on show add complete center. Yeah, this is it. Now come back up here. We need to implement some classes. So come back up here and implement the activity lifecycle callbacks. Then import this class and then copy this lifecycle callbacks before that let's first create this object of the activity up here and then copy this lifecycle callbacks and you have to put them in the my application class so to avoid confusion i would prefer putting them at the bottom here then import this bundle yeah now you can see the error is gone then we also need the activity lifecycle observer so this Lyco lifecycle observer then you add it at the implementation here just put a comma and then import it okay now the next thing you have to use the process cycle cycle owner to add the observer to the activity that the user will be on when returning to your app so down here after initializing the SDK you put this and here we are having an error so i just found that this guide is using uh the lifecycle version 2.3.1 but this lifecycle version is causing an error 
as you cannot get the process lifecycle owner so what we do let's replace this to a lower version 3.0.0 and this was working for me so maybe uh this is at, at the time of making this video but in the future the higher version could be working so right now i'm going to use this one so now i can come here and import it okay so let's have this on life cycle event copy it and paste it outside the on create method here then import it now we need to consider add expiration so that whenever the app is in the background for four hours or more and the ad was loaded when the user returns we should not load uh we should show we should load another ad instead of just showing the ad that was loaded four hours ago so to consider the ad expiration we have to use this code to determine if the load time is greater than four hours so that we can load another ad instead of just showing the ad that was stored four hours ago so copy this put it up here and what we are going to do is to be accessed from another class just make it public now come down here in the load add then here here is where we shall instantiate the our load add uh, that timer so the load time we input the date class so we use just from java.util then we also need this method to check if the there was load times less than four and hours ago and then long hours which will be here four hours so copy this method and paste it inside it should be inside the my application class so it should be here down here paste it and now the, the other thing is to to change the code inside there is add a variable method to this one so it's add a variable here press this code and here this code checks if the ad was loaded more than four time four hours ago but if in your case you just want to use maybe like one hour or two hours you can just change it from here so i hope this code is all so we are going to build and run our app and see if it is working or not so here is our app but is throwing an exception let's look at it looking at these crash logs let's look at this line um this seems to be okay then this one oh here's the problem so this requires a context but we are passing uh, the method is passing an activity so let's change this to my application do this and we run our app again
and this time it is working so wait a few seconds for the ad to load then you can close the app open some other app and then when the user returns to the app yeah you see the app open ad is working